For the first section of part two of this chapter, I focus on lexical cohesion. What does it mean for lexical cohesion? Lexical cohesion does refer to how the writer or speaker uses lexical item. For example, like noun, verb, adjective, or adverb and even sequences that it can be chained of clauses and sentences to relate to touch consistently to its area of focus or fear that uh, it is about topic or main idea. Now please observe the following uh, text with me. The meeting commences at 6.30 but from the moment it began, it was clear that all was not well. Please investigate further for the bold and underlined word. So from the first text, we have two words, command and began. Let's think in German. So why I highlighted in bold and underlined manner of the two words from the first text here. Now, let's continue with the second touch. There was a fine old rocking chair that his father used to sit, a desk where he wrote the letter, a nest of small table and a dark imposing bookcase. Now all this furniture was to be sold and with it own pass. With it his own pass. Now, I would like you to uh, investigate the underline and bold word and phrase again. So the first one, rocking chair. And another one, seat. Next, desk. Next, road. Table. Bookcase. And eventually, furniture. Now, let's think in your mind again about why I highlighted um, this word or phrases with the second touch. We can see that um, the word that I highlighted from the first touch and second touch, they are consistently related to each other. We can see that uh, we have different lexical item that the writer has used in these two texts. You can see like the first text with the verb command. The command it meant to begin and in other words we use the word began. And another one another touch we have like rocking chair, seat, desk, road, table, bookcase and furniture. For this they are also relevant to each other. So we can see that um, the first tag, it talks about um, the resuming or the kicking off of the meeting. And second one, we talk about the furniture. So like the second tag, even the verb, right, like seat, even the verb like road, even the noun like table, like desk, rocking chair, bookcase, they consistently support to each other. So we can see that all of the lexical items used from the two texts, they can be um, supported, okay, each other, that um, with this, they can make the touch in order to be understood well and it can has the uh, consistent relationship with each other that focus on the one main idea. In lexical cohesion, there are expectancy relations between words. For example, in text, if you read the word chair, you are li likely to see the word seat, everyone 
like what I mentioned in the second touch. For desk, okay, we, we sing up the word write, okay, you write on the desk, for example, table, okay, bookcase, so they can be um, belong to um, the furniture. This lexical relation create lexical set or string which are related to each other. Any trouble or problem with this relation will hinder our ability to take meaning from a piece of language. Now, take a look at further in terms of the kind of lexical relation, everyone. The first, it is called taxonomic lexical relation. Lexical item related to one another where class or subclass, for example, like a rodent and mouse, can be part and whole, like tail and mouse, can be even the action as whole or even part, everyone, like it and nibble. So this also the another relation. Next, we call expectancy relation. It can be the predictable relation between subject and verb, everyone. For example, like mouse and script, and verb and object, like nibble, nibble cage. So from this, like mouse can be the subject and verb script. And here, nibble can be verb and cage can be object. This relation link nominal element with verbal element okay like subject and verb mouse can be regarded as nominal element and verbal elements can be script next we take a look at taxonomic lexical relation in terms of classification and composition Classification is the relationship between a superordinate term and its member that we call hyponym. I hope that you still remember about superordinate and hyponym in the previous unit, everyone. Co-hyponymy can be two or more lexical items a superordinate of a superordinate class. For example, like influenza and um, pneumonia. It can be ear nasis. So influenza and pneumonia, they can be the core hyponymies that they are under the superordinate class, which is called ENS. Class or subclass, two or more lexical items are related via subclassification. For example, large ENS. ENS can be superordinate, while eumonia can be the hyponym of the ENS as well. Next is contrast. Contrast, we refer to two or more lexical items, encode a contrast relation, or we call antonym, like clear and blurry, clear and blurry, wet and dry, joy with despair. For similarity, it happens when two or more lexical items express similar meaning. There are two main subtype. We have synonymy, okay, when two words restate each other. For example, like message and report, like new and intelligent. Repetition, for repetition, can be another uh, subtype of similarity. This one, is a lexical item that is repeated, everyone. For example, like death and death, ghoul 
and girl. Next is about composition. Composition is the part or whole relationship between lexical items, which are um, meronym or core meronym. Meronymy can be two lexical items are related as whole to part or vice versa. For example, like body and heart. So heart is a part of the body. Book and chapter. Chapter is a part of a book. Next is core meronymy. Core meronymy can be two lexical items are related by both being part of a common whole, like heart and lung, right? Chapter and unit. So heart and lung, both of them can be the core uh, meronymy to the body, and chapter and unit can be the core meronymy of a book. Expectancy relation. Take a look at this with me, everyone. Like when we refer to the doer of an action. For example, like doctor is the doer and action by doctor we call dinos. For the doer as a baby, the action can be cry. The doer as sparrow, the action can be Twitter, for example. Action and receiver affected. Like whisper is action and receiver affected is word. Break can be action and new can be um, receiver affected. Flay is action. Piano can be receiver affected. Even our process, it can be the location in which it takes place or happen, like work. It can be um, with office, learn, and school. Okay, sleep, bedroom. All right. So we can see like sleep and bedroom. The last example. So bedroom can be the location, right, where um, that uh, where it happened. Okay. And for um, the process, right, it can be uh, slipped. Next is individual item. Individual item can be nominal group they formed. For example, like heart with disease. Char can be with care. Truth can be with pace, everyone. So together they can form okay with another item as word. Next, I would like to discuss conjunctive cohesion. Everyone, <clears throat> conjunctive cohesion refer to how the writer creates and expresses logical relation between the part of a text. For example. He was insensitive to group need. Consequently, there was a lot of bad feeling. Please observe the underlying bold word consequently. So why the writer use consequently here? What does it mean? For this, the writer want to enhance the logical relation between the first sentence and second sentence of a text. With the use of conjunctive cohesion, it have add to texture of a text, creating semantic unity, characterizing and problematic text as well. Conjunctive cohesion can be uh, with a uh, three main tab, like elaboration, extension, and enhancement. Now, go with me from one to one. We begin from elaboration. Elaboration can be a relationship of restatement or clarification. For example, the, co the common conjunction that we use in uh, elaboration for clarify or for restating, like in other words, 
that is or that is to say I mean to say or I meant for example for instance does to illustrate uh, to illustrate to be more precise actually as a matter of fact or even in fact now take a look at the following example how contribute to direct product in other words they provide meal butter cheese and the lie so from here they try to um, elaborate or make elaboration for using the expression in other words for this it can be one of the way in order to make um, the text okay to be text uh, and to be logical link as well with the condition here that can be condition of making um, clarification next is extension extension can be a relationship of addition or variation or we can say contrast typical conjunction include like and also moreover in addition nor but yet on the other hand however on the contrary instead apart from that except for that alternatively for example the use of nuclear energy is recommended however that will contribute to um, the depletion of fossil fuel from this the writer used however in order to logically link from the first to the second sentence in order to show variation or the contrast meaning next is enhancement enhancement can be way in which one sentence can develop on the meaning of another in terms of term comparison cause condition or concession the common temporal conjunction include then next afterward just then at the same time before that soon after a while meanwhile or that time until then up to that point and now for example i am saving up money to buy my own car meanwhile my parent are uh, letting me use there from this it talk about the term of time okay that we use for this context of enhancement we have other types of conjunction everyone like comparative conjunction for example like lie similarly in a different way etc for example, her sister Louis told her the news carefully. Similarly, Richard was cautious and constrained in what he said. Next is casual conjunction. For example, like so, like then, therefore, consequently, hand, because, or even because of. For example, she realized she now was free. For that reason, she felt suddenly filled with joy. Now we talk about the concessive conjunction that we talk about the contrast. Okay. Um, for example, when we use with um, but, yet, still, does, despite this. For example, I have all the working experience they are looking for. Despite this, I am not qualified for the job. That's all for um, more content related to part two of um, chapter four, everyone. So take note uh, for any uh, question in order to discuss with your lecturer. Thank you for your um, attentively um, listening at the moment. Goodbye. See you with another coming clip, everyone.